If you get that paper back and you see like, oh, I got an A, how do you feel? Yay! Yeah, my, yeah, my grades gonna right, stay okay. where I want. Yeah, like yeah, that's good, right? Because obviously you want to get good grades. But when you are you excited to see that grade? Or are you excited to see comments? Comments. comments. General, like when you get that paper back, what is it? Where does it usually end up? Um, trash can. Recycle bin. Yeah. I look at when you get a paper back from the teacher and there's a grade on it. What usually happens to that paper once you get it back? I just throw it away. I heard I lose it, I recycle it, throw it in garbage. Is that if it's really good, good, I'll show my mouth, but then I'll like throw it away. It's definitely the comments because they truly have an authentic audience. It's not just the teacher giving them a grade or putting, you know, generic comments. These are kids from other classes, you know, in our country and overseas. And having that interaction is really what drives the kids to participate. Mr. Jacob right. motivated us because he's like, the kids in England are so smart. You gotta look smart for them. Yeah, like, just make me look spell checked everything. Yeah, I yeah, asked him like, here. I'm, I'm an okay writer too, so they like I made me actually like go over everything and like make sure the blog post was good instead of just slapping everything. see the timestamps of when my students are posting to their own blogs and they're showing up on weekends at two in the morning uh, really early before school they're doing this during their advisory kids are posting all the time it's not just in class in fact we've devoted very little class time to working on these it's typically something uh, that they're doing on their own at home like feedback from your peers, like other kids your age, or do you like feedback from teachers? Kids are kids. Both help, because if, if you get like the feedback from the teacher, you know what you need to fix, but like if your peers like it too, it makes you feel good about yourself, because you know you're good. But if like um, kids our own age, like sort of give us feedback, they sort of like connect to us because they're our age and they understand how we feel about things. Awesome. Uh, we did have couple students that had quite a few comments and they were kind of trying a competition to see who could be the most interesting student, who could get the most responses, but it's good enough, it's driving the kids to participate and kids who weren't getting as many comments, they were actually kind of self-assessing, what, what do I need to do to attract the attention of these kids? And I have to say, you could see kids reposting their work and trying to add more and they're going above and beyond because they want the attention from the kids in the other classes. The virtues of having a real or simulated audience for performance are pretty straightforward. The student has much greater clarity about the goal because there's a specific audience and purpose. And there's the incentive of it's not just for the teacher, it's for this audience. And I've seen it repeatedly in English classes, in history classes, in vocational, technical classes, that the students work harder with much greater focus on what they're trying to accomplish when there is a real or virtual audience that they have to deal with.
one, the technology that's available, uh, two, the motivation of the teacher and the students, and then three, technically the connection that they have to technology. Every single student has the ability to publish. And think about the motivation of a student when they know that some product that I produce is going to be out there, available and consumable, literally around the world. I can honestly tell you, if you tell students, write this paper, or let's put it online, and I'm going to push it out on Twitter so people around the world will see it, what's probably going to happen to the quality of the product they produce? I actually want to go back home and go on my own computer and go on Kidblog. That's how bad it, it, um, it inspires me to do. tell the students that you know this is an authentic audience they are ambassadors of not just Joliet but also our state and even our country yes, that's what I felt when we had to write that introduction post I'm like I'm gonna make myself sound really interesting because I was afraid like they're gonna criticize me and like the people in England like I'm like oh, my grammar is horrible I fixed this they're gonna make fun of me because they sound like second grade and it was just I don't know, it makes, it makes you try harder. So the kids did really, they took the time to actually click on the spell check button. And they did review their work. I'm not going to say that they're perfect writers, but they're definitely bringing their A game when they do writing on this website. Much better than they would for something I would require for class. With this map over here, the kids are very impressed to see that we've had 16,880 view our work on this site. It, it like makes you happy whenever you see someone else comment on your work. So it's just like, yeah. like oh like my god, comment. somebody just <laughs> commented on my work. Right. Speaking on both sides, because yeah. if, you, like, if we get a good response from a teacher, then, and then we know that we're doing well and we're putting all our effort into it. But it's also nice to know that other people are interested in our work and it gives us some motivation. What about like getting that feedback from other kids your age? Like, What do you guys like about that? Like, just getting other different opinions on it. Like, let's say you get opinions from people here in America, but then the people that are in, you know, other sides of the world, like, their opinion on, like, let's say you're talking about China's one-child policy, and you're like, oh, it's so bad and everything, and then someone from the other side of the world is like, oh, man, this is, like, the best plan ever, you know, and it's just, like, different opinions, viewpoints. When you have an audience to work with, it also makes it more likely that the feedback that the student gets is credible and actionable because you can see or hear whether the audience did or did not respond the way that you intended and that's just really focusing and really helpful and gets the student realizing that their goal is to achieve a result not just do a pro forma piece of work um, and it also eventually makes them realize that it's in their control that by working with the audience, by getting the feedback from the audience or the client, uh, and improving and getting the satisfied audience or client, they begin to realize, hey, I can do that. Uh, some of the, the most interesting factors that I've seen was the kids that don't raise their hand in class. They don't participate. We've been using blogging and discussion boards in class through JT Learn, and this gives kids a voice. They may not be comfortable speaking in class, but they are very confident in their writing, and they'll share their great ideas. They'll actually create dialogue between students within the class. There's a lot of students, though, that uh, they may not get along with people, or they may have a reputation uh, that's preceded them, and students don't want to really interact. But now that we have an authentic audience, we've got students that are complete strangers in Georgia, in England, and these students are actually having advanced conversations and really making connections with these kids that they don't know. And that was really surprising. That's, that's a good point. Like, people, like for shy people, like, I'm sure a lot of shy people don't feel like they exist. And like, I know a lot of kids, you know, they have self esteem problems. They don't feel like they're worth anything. You know, it makes them sad. But this, like, there's somebody on here. Like, I know a lot of people.
online. Just grown a lot in like yeah. they just they realize how smart they really are because you don't really know because they don't participate as much. Exactly. And it helps them get their participation because you wouldn't some of their grade can suffer from not like I did not assign an, a post this week, but students are still posting their creative writing. And this is where technology plays a big role because how many of you share your students' work digitally, online, YouTube, a blog, something like that? Raise your hand high and be proud of it. And so we start, we're really afraid about putting kids' pictures and their stuff online, and yet that's the, the start of creating a true digital footprint, a digitally relevant footprint. So think about this now. When you put something online, it go away? No. When you get a paper back from your teachers, most of the time what happens to it ends up going in the garbage, right? But when you do, when you put a lot of effort into something and you work really hard on it and it goes online, what happens to it? The stuff you put out there is going to be out there forever, forever it's not right? Just wash away. So, do you think there's benefit then to like when you do this really great, like creative, like academic work? That it's online forever. Yeah, and someone yeah. can always find it. Is and there a benefit to like, that? Yeah, like, like, college, they, like, people from college, they research you and they look at what you're doing to accept you for jobs and stuff and they can see your academic work. In the day and age we live on, employers, colleges, they're, they're Googling people. They're seeing where you stand in the world and what kind of an impression you put out there and where you are. And so providing that audience, I, I urge you, I challenge you, get something together where you can share students' work. In an online space, that is an authentic audience. Kids around the world are commenting on blogs and sharing their work. That's pretty powerful stuff. You know, how many of you in, in your class, you know, I, I give a presentation, you know, as, as a student and I go sit down next to my buddy and I say, how did I do? Oh, that was awesome. Even if it was terrible. But guess what? People you don't know are honest, <laughs> sometimes brutally so. Yeah, so we are a world affairs class. The other classes are actually um, English or language arts classes that we're working with. But we're at the level where uh, the curriculum just has natural connections that can be made. So we're discussing during our Unit 3 equality and the concept of, well, can we really achieve equality? Could we really have a perfect society? Well, the class in Atlanta is reading Brave New World, which is about a utopian or dystopian society in the future. The kids in England are reading a book called Stone Cold, which is about homelessness in London. And the students just made natural connections between these three novels. The students in our class may not have read these, but the themes are very similar. So the kids are having great conversations, making natural connections. And I uh, do encourage it, but the kids were doing it on their own, talking about To Kill a Mockingbird and some of the themes that come out from their English class as well. So it truly is integrated uh, with the Common Core. So classes you know, overseas may not know what the Common Core really is, but um, they're doing it, and we're working on this and truly integrating the classes with uh, quad blogging. Even if, like, you know, other schools, treat, like, if they look at kid blogs, they're like, eh, no, they should still try it, because even if it doesn't work, it's like, you still, you don't know until you try. Yeah, like, you, exactly, like, you don't know until you try it. Yeah, I honestly, like, the, nothing's ever going to be perfectly the way we want it. That's just, it's not going to happen, but the way that, the direction that this is moving, I think it's going up instead of down. Like this is this is working. Like this is working for me. It's working for a lot of other students. And I also think that the way we learn like this, it's not just about you know memorization and taking a test a few days. It's not just about that. It's about connecting and synthesizing, you know, to to other things and like other issues in countries and you know making those connections and realizing we need to change things about it. Like, it's not just memorizing, it's like thinking. Like thinking, it's just thinking. So think about the motivation, the engagement, the transformation, and the connection with students. If you can say, hey, we're going to put together a project, we're going to publish it, 
and you may end up getting close to 100,000 views of your little project. And that's the thing a lot of students think, oh, it's just this little project for my class. Wrong. That's why I think publishing is a very big component to digital age learning.